Previously on Backpacker Diaries. Really enjoyed the walk up and over Mystic Pass yesterday. The side trip to Mystic Lake added on about one kilometer round trip for a total of 14 kilometers yesterday. The huckleberries were exquisite as well. Today is September 1st, 2017, and for the second night in a row, I had a backcountry campsite all to myself. I spent last night here at Mystic Junction Campground, and as luck would have it, after nine hot meals out here in Banff National Park, my camp fuel ran out. I know that there's a warden's cabin, like a park ranger cabin, right over here, just 0.3 miles away. So I'm hoping that I can bum some hot water or else some camp fuel. And that's bound to make the walk back to my car today run a little more smoothly. It's about 18 kilometers or so to get back to the long-term parking there at Mount Norquay ski area. So we'll see how I go. Also wanted to take a few minutes to just compare and contrast my experience in Glacier National Park, Montana with Banff National Park here in Alberta. They're both in grizzly country, but they are managed a little differently. For one thing, every campsite here in Canada that I've been to, with a couple exceptions, have the cable system for storing food. So with that, it removes the struggle of having to toss a rope over a bar or a tree branch to hang food from. Glacier National Park has the bar installed at every campsite, which is certainly luxurious compared to not having a bar at all. But having the cable to hang food from is a real nice feature here with most of the campsites in the Banff area. Another difference here in Banff National Park is even some of the routes that are suggested on their website there, the trail can still be quite rough and unmaintained. Also, there's a big difference with the permitting. Here in Banff, you can score your permit here in person or over the phone. And with that, you have your permit in hand. The issue that we had in Glacier, Montana this year was that they only grant permits up to a day ahead of when you're going into the backcountry. That's the way that they manage risk in case of wildfires or bear activity. They closed backcountry permit entirely for three straight days, which happened to coincide with the trip my uncle and I were doing there. In our case, we had to eat the money that we had already paid for those fees to reserve those routes. Whereas here in Banff, I had the permit in my hand four days ahead of time and was going to be able to go in regardless. Then another big difference is with the huckleberry policy. Like wildflowers and other natural objects, picking huckleberries are not allowed here in the Banff National Park. Whereas in Glacier National Park, Montana and others, you can pick berries that you'll be consuming yourself. Um, but no more than that. In Glacier, Montana, you can pick huckleberries, whereas in Banff National Park, Alberta, no berry picking allowed. They want to leave that food source for the grizzly and black bear populations here. Lastly, I found that the backcountry was rather uncrowded, especially getting this late into the season. It's worth mentioning that I did meet Several groups that had planned to go into the Mount Assiniboine area this week, but that area happens to be closed at the moment here at the end of August in 2017. So as a sort of backup plan, they entered into the Sawback Trail instead between Banff and Lake Louise. Down in the United States, the week leading into Labor Day weekend is really maybe the last hurrah of summer for many of us. As such, the backcountry in Montana would be more likely to still be busy and crowded. If you want a little bit more space and less crowds, you might consider coming a little further north here to Banff. So those are five differences that I can spot between how things are run here at Banff National Park in contrast to Glacier National Park in Montana. Lucky for me, there were a couple of 
Banff National Park employees that were staying there at the warden's cabin last night. And they even had a extra fuel canister that for whatever reason did not work with their cooking system. Big thanks to Pascal and his friend for helping me out with some fuel. Definitely uh, made my morning and will make the 16 kilometer walk back to the car more tolerable. This section on the way down to Coxcomb campsite is some of the easiest tread that I've seen on the whole journey here. It appears that in certain sections they've even laid down some beauty bark for the horses, by the horses. That's quite a contrast to earlier on the trip. As it turns out, this is actually a cross-country ski route in the wintertime. So that helps make sense of the gradual grade as well. And in summary, this five night trip over the Sawback Range here marked a number of firsts for me in my backpacking career, especially my first grizzly sighting there on my first full day in the backcountry near Baker Lake. It's also my first time getting hit with bear spray from a somewhat tipsy hiker that I was chatting with. It also marks the longest solo trip that I've done up until now, that being five nights here in late August, extending into September 1st here. I did meet several people that were doing the trip over three nights, but for me, five nights was a good pace given the length of 75 kilometers or so to complete the whole thing. Taking a leisurely pace like that also allowed me to enjoy the various side trips over Packer Pass and checking out Llewellyn Lake and the Ink Pots, not to mention Mystic Lake. Definitely got lucky with the weather this time around to have six days up here without any rain at all. Pretty spectacular for backpacking purposes. Not so good for wildfire purposes. Never did I even have to get my rain gear out, but I certainly brought it because in Alberta, it's pretty common to see rain this time of year. So glad I took the time to go a little more slowly than most. And it definitely has left me hungry for more exploration of the Banff area here. The Canadian Rockies are certainly a sight to behold. So hope I can get back again for another trip here someday. That's all for now. See you next time. On the next Backpacker Diaries. After making my way up Univa Canyon, came up on the Univa Mine and a spectacular display of reef colors. I'm going to head further south down through the Three Finger Canyon area where there's a petroglyph that I'd really like to see.